Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, according to his great mercy, gave us new life again unto a living hope, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, unto an inheritance that is incorruptible and undefiled, and that faith like as a father pities his children, so as one whom is he shall like a lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom. I would not have you to be ignorant, brothers and sisters, concerning those who fall sorrow, not as the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also that are fallen asleep in Jesus will God bring with him. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I invite us all to join in the singing of the hymn. Attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll. Whatever my Lord thou hast taught me to say, it is well. It is well with my soul.
everlasting love that can turn the shadow of death into the morning. Help us now to wait upon you with reverent and submissive hearts. In the silence of this hour, speak to us of eternal things, that through patience and comfort of your word, we may embrace and hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given to us in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. We pray, Lord, for those who mourn the passing of Mr. Patrick, relatives and friends, for those who are saddened by his passing, Lord, we pray that you will, Father, led by uprightness and righteousness and justice and fairness and good neighborliness. Be with us, Lord, and guide us by your Spirit. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Be seated, please. The program will proceed as indicated. We are first going to have a speech by Uncle Durbin Patrick, followed by a tribute by Sharon King. Then we'll have a musical tribute by Cynthia Pinnock, followed by open tributes. I don't know how many open tributes, but we will receive open tributes. So Uncle Durbin, it's your turn. Come here, sir. The days you gave him, Lord, has ended. Thy darkness call, calls at thy gates. To these our morning dews ascending. Thy praise shall sanctify our grace. Today we sing out a song, a song of love and appreciation. In thanksgiving for the life of Dr. Patrick. <clears throat> I remind us that Dr. Patrick is the first grandson of Catherine Edwards. Catherine Edwards. Yes, so this is the second of Catherine's the second. I, I thought it would be easy. But my friend was really dear to me. So today I'll be singing out a song. Mm -hmm. And as we gather today, our hearts are heavy with the weight of this, of this loss. We come together to celebrate the, the, mar the remarkable life that this has been. A devoted family cultivator. Somebody who cherish family, just as you cultivate a farm. Then, Bill Patrick, your legacy will live forever in our hearts, in our lives. The memory to you, you will share. 
then there was more than a cousin. He was a guiding light, a, a reminder of the profound impact one individual can have on the world. His love for family ran deep within his veins. The core values for which was defined by, as defined by my late father, Dudley, the second of Catherine's son, that Catherine Edwards was a lady steeped in family values. And he said she communicated to voice, her voice, and I see it has rubbed up and then today. We stand as a family because we have cultivated that love. We have cultivated that spirit given to us by our grandmother and her three boys. I can test to all three boys that the sons have been wonderful family members and they have also instilled that. As testament to that. The way Denville nurtured and cherished his family, family bond, was a true marvel. His presence as a way of making everything, every gathering brighter, every occasion more meaningful. Family. All strong family values and he poured his time, energy, and unwavering love into fostering connections with the rest of the family. He was a thread that wove all together, ensuring that no matter the distance, we, we remain a tightly knit travesty of love and support. I recall when Denville left Jamaica at an early age. Those days you had to write a letter. And every now and then you would receive a letter from Denville. Just to say what how he was doing. I commend the life of Denville to all young Patricks. That one day you might wish to write a story. You may wish to write a story about it. <coughs> this is a story which you can start from any angle. You can start from this early beginning, or you can start from the end and go back. But this is a story of a man who has lived. <coughs> a man who has overcome all hurdles, many hurdles. Even things. One of the things that I am happy for, that like all other Patrick men, my father, my two aunts, my, my grandmother's first, they were all surrounded with the love of family. This is one thing I am really proud of, because I tried to visit with them though, just before he left for England. Um, Tony and, 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 and Mrs. Patrick had another uh, engagement so we could make it. So unfortunately I didn't get to see him the last time before. But all that he has shared, all we have shared, and my wife tells me, oh, then Bill came today and then Bill had a little piece of land behind his house. And you think that then Bill had a large farm. Because when he's coming, he brings you a bag of hair, a couple of cane, and anything that is on that little, little backyard, a spoon, then will nourish it and cherish it. He will take earth from other places to come just to put that one plant, just to make that plant. This is the level of the man, and the level at which he took family matters. Today I cry because I am so sad.
sad that my, my cousin is gone because we know we all have to go. But because of the values, the values of family, which we hold here. And as we move on through life, and I am suggesting to all of us as family groups that we need to keep that bond strong. We need to nurture it in the interest of all that has gone before us, from the interest of my grandmother, her three sons, and now us. Because her three sons left the legacy. My father will be the youngest one and the most children, the left of us. Uncle Henry has three or four children, and Uncle Charles had like two. One is passed. So the legacy is there, and we have to cherish it. We have to cherish it, because if we don't cherish it and nurture it, it will fail and we can't allow it to, in the interest of all that has happened before us. I want to brothers and sisters who are overseas and couldn't be here today, but I have, uh, we have two brothers here. We have a wedding today. One of my sons, my niece, my brother's son is getting married. So what we had to do was to split. He goes to the wedding, because it's his son, and I come here. So I represent that side of the family. Because we had to, we couldn't be. It has been too much a part of us. And I want to come here in this life to the rest of us. A life of humility. Sharing and a life of us. Sharon, France. And now to Cynthia. And before the open tributes, we will hear from Uncle UT. So, Sharon first, then Cynthia, and then Uncle UT. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not sleep, but we shall be all changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this incorruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Mr. Patrick. If you ever 
people for your greetings. And what the mother said, she said, when one's dead, he can consider it. But it's not so easy, especially when you want a good one. Amen. And this song that I'm going to sing for you is that I wrote the song when mama died. Because we love my mama so much that we have wrote the song. I hope you enjoy it. I want to meet you someday And the land beyond the shore That land created over there That provided for you and for me But with love and pure in heart I shall meet you on the day You don't need no silver nor gold Nor treasures of chains and bundles, but with love and pure in heart, I shall meet you on the day. So don't cry, my little sister, don't cry. Just wipe your weeping eyes. Father, So don't cry, my little sister, don't cry. Just wipe your feet Thank you. Son, I thought I'd better say a few words. My father wasn't a father, he wasn't just a father. He was my confidant, a teacher, a mentor, and above all, my friend. When father retired, we'd chat about anything. One of his favorite topics was politics. We would always attempt to put the world to right. Minutes, sometimes hours would pass, lost in deep discussion. Father would sit for hours, researching things that interested him on his internet, as he'd call it. I recall some nights getting a call, Tony, the computer's not working, and we would uh, work together to rectify that problem. Days after, Father passed, I deliberated on what to say. And for some reason, my mind just jumped back to the good old days when we all lived as a family, a family home in Southern Birmingham. Father was the ruler in our home, and mum was the, 
One was his side, second, in command. <laughs> nothing got past them, you know, nothing got past them. Sometimes I thought, you know, they had eyes in the back of their heads. As Damon and I was always getting into trouble for one thing or another. But you know what? Damon more so than me. But we never thought nothing of it. To us, it was just part of growing up. Father would always get me involved in various tasks around the house. Did I actually have a choice? Not really. Although I was interested. But I see now, looking back at my childhood, Father was secretly laying the foundations that would shape me into the person who stands here before you. Those important life lessons I cherish, building on them as I walk my path, passing them on to my own children and others I should meet on my journey of life. So Father, I'm truly thankful and grateful for that. Father has transitioned to the next realm and his spirit is strong within me. Love you always, God. As I talk about my father's life, I am reminded of the powerful partnership between my parents. The partnership that brought me into this world. Mom, you walk the path. You walk the path and you continue to on your journey of life. You all the family, you all the family together. Your strength, resilience, and unyielding spirit. And for this, in the bottom of my heart, Mum, I love you. Thank you. Junior, son of Denville Patrick. As a father, Denville laid the foundation which I have, which has enabled me to be the man who stands here before you today. There are many lessons and values that my father has taught me. For me, one of the fondest memories is watching my dad repair cars in the front garden. That would always involve me, which piqued my interest at an early age and has led me to become the owner of a successful business within the automotive industry. That taught me the importance of family, to nurture and care for those around me, especially my brothers and sisters. My father always stressed the importance of understanding your history. With the knowledge and experience gained from my father, it has enabled me to navigate the obstacles and challenges of life. I will always love my father and mother as these two people moulded me into the person I am today. I am truly grateful that the most I he enabled these two souls to connect so that my siblings and I are here today. Thank you, Father. You've completed your dream and left a legacy through your children, grandchildren and great-grandchildren. I will always stand strong, even on my last breath. I love you, Dad. Thank you.
I'm Patricia Patrick, daughter of Lynn Patrick and Deborah Patrick. It's a very good man. Compassionate, caring, loving. Always full of good advice. He didn't mince his words, though, so when you were looking for advice for my dad, he was going to let you know how he felt. He's very straight talking. But he came from a good heart. And throughout my life, he's given me very good advice. He's given us all good advice. One of the advice that my dad gave me whether I was in a job that I couldn't stand anymore, teaching. <laughs> couldn't stand it anymore. And, but I wanted to sell my house, I wanted a bigger house, you know it go. Both my mum and my dad looked at me and said, what do you want a bigger house for? Your sons are going to leave you soon, so there's going to be a new one in there. Just fix up your yard, man. What do you want to, what do you want to move? Stay where you're there, just fix up your yard. And I'm so glad that I took that advice because I was able to realize my true dream and passion in life. I was able to explore that and to do that. And I did stay where I am today. And I'm still fixing up that house. <laughs> but yeah. I know even today, that is gonna give me his guidance and give me good advice. I just need to listen. And I could hear his voice guiding me. On July the 18th, at exactly 4.38, my dad took his last breath. Surrounded by his wife, my mum, my two brothers, Tony and Deborah, Two sisters, Ivan and Caroline, and his grandsons, the King, Luke and Shaquille. We're gonna miss you, Pops. I love you. I'm always gonna love you. Rest in eternal peace, Pops. Thank you. It's been difficult, but it's also been very emotional, but it's also been very reflective. Yeah. Oh, okay, I'm going to struggle with words, but yeah, it's difficult. I mean, one memory that I have, I think I've shared before, um, just to say how um, forward thinking my dad was in the late se early, late 70s, I think. I think I was about seven, myself and my sister, my sisters, playing with these lovely little white dolls. Um, I always remember it. And my dad came home one day, picked up these dolls, you know, just threw them out the window, you know, and um, 
who was, of course, who was very upset about, you know, not having our lovely little white dolls. Because, yeah. of course, we treasured them. And then I think it was not so long after mum and dad bought us these lovely black dolls that looked like us, you know, and then we understood, you know, where our parents were coming from, you know. It was important that we engaged in things that reflected, you know, ourselves. Yeah. And that was in the late 70s. I don't know where they got these dolls from, but, you know, because there wasn't many, as far as I know, in England at that time. But, you know, they were special, they were precious to us, you know. Yeah. I'm, I'm so thankful for having my dad in my life. You know, I'm thankful for having my brothers, because my brothers kind of remind me of my dad. They be, their mannerisms, the way they speak, how they are, you know, you know, very patient and, you know, I can always rely on my brothers, so I'm thankful for that. You know, I learn a lot from them, and I think it's because they gain from my dad. So, you know, his legacy will live on, of course. So thank you for being here today. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Um, who am I? I am everything uh, as in relationship to Mr. Patrick and uh, family. Auntie over there, you know. So I am cousin, friend, you know, and a son. I can remember Mr. Patrick as a person who is always on time, you know, principal, you know. And when I say principal, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm strict when you come on to doing things right and getting things done. You know, even if it takes time and, you know, he always ensures that you try to be diligent and in the right way. And uh, I can just remember as I was with my daughter over there, you know, when, you know, I, you know, impregnated my, <laughs> my other half there, you know. And Mr. Boy, Mr. Patrick, I was up to tell you, you know, say, anything, anything you have, man, tell me, man, tell me, man, tell me, man, say, I said, eh, I'm about to go and do it. He said, yes, I'm about to go and do it. And he was like, all right, come here, come here. Why? Ivan, you know, you know, because of, you know, my pet name is Ivan, you know, my rightful name is Marvin Richards. And he was like, Ivan, yeah, boy, I don't know what to say, you know. I should have told you, man, I should have told you. I said, tell me what, Mr. Pacheco, uh, I should have told you how to use a little thing, man. A little thing, man. <laughs> 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 I said, well, 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 I don't understand. I don't understand. A little thing, man. Uh, you sure you're ready? <laughs> I said, yes, man. You know, I like, you know, I have a, you know, I have a step up to the, to the plate and, you know, and, and leave it, you know. I can't remember the next moment again, you know, because every now and again um, I would drive, you know, drive, you know, to Kingston, wherever, you know, to Jamaica and my aunt and, you know, he was always ensuring that, you know, you, 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 you pay attention on the road, you know, you know, make some, 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 some mistake that, you know, you shouldn't make and then cost your life and cost a whole lot of things, your time, money, you know, vehicle, you know, as, as sometimes we look for the vehicle out there, you know, you see a clean than some 2023 vehicle, you know, to show you how, how disciplined he was and how caring he was. You know, so sometimes I drive and, you know, if there is a patrol, I must say, boy, so you see the patrol there, take the right, take the left, until it like, <coughs> then fail, like, all right. And I said, take the right, take the right, there's a patrol. Leave the boy when the boy drive now. Are you drive? So, <laughs> so there was, you know, those are some memories that, that, that I have, you know, and will always, you know, I will always keep, you know. But, 
he is also a person who believes in, in black, you know. And we in Jamaica, we, we don't tend to, tend to love each other, you know? we tend to pay more attention to our close ones, you know, the, our, our immediate family. But however, Denville Patrick was not like that. You know, he, he believed that everybody is equal, he believed in equality, you understand? And that all of us should care for one another. You know, and if you even for, if, so, sometimes when I go to the man, if somebody beg him all for money, I always have the money for him. You know, you remember saying I have it for him to him like share, you know. You, you see my dig up in pocket and I said, where, where, where did I put where, 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 where's the money? Where's the money? You know, so he's a, he's always that kind person. You know, and, and, and if you look at if you, if you look at the picture, you know, he, 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 he's always a person with smiling. You know, always a person with smiling. And my personal experience with him in the last moment, you know, he was a person who was strong. Strong. I mean, strong. I always ask the boy, don't, don't want to make the smart things get you done, man. I always will your head up and keep strong, man. Those are some of the smart things. Those, I don't want to hear about them. Those are negative, you understand? So, when, 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 the, when the, the last moment, you know, you know, my personal experience with him, I realized that he had made up his mind for this. And some of us might, you know, we, not, not even some of us, none of us want to accept the reality of, of Denville Patrick, it's a Denville Patrick moving on. But I can say personally, it is something that we have to accept. We have to accept it and tell it because um, when I took him to the doctor, you know, and I was there with him and, and, and all of that, and, you know, he was, he was just signing away, you know, and I, and I take him out of the vehicle and, you know, I have to, you know, help him out. And I give him the car key, you know, you, you know him as a person, I always check his car and make sure it's everything right, right? <laughs> So I give him his car key and he hand me, hand me back, hand me back everything. And he said, talk to my sons. I am done even I am done. That's it. I said, no, 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 Mr. Patrick, man. We, we, we have life, man. We have go upstairs, man. I chew your tired, man. I chew your tired, man. And I said, no, this is it, man. I can't manage. I can't manage. You know, and I think that is, at that time, you know, I felt it. And honestly, to be frank, you know, I don't feel it now like I felt it then. Because at that time I realized that he made up his mind from there, you know. And it's something that was a part of me from then, you know. I couldn't share it, but I had to keep it until now. Because, you know, we have to keep positive and be strong, you know. So, I have to say, let us all keep strong for him until it just keeps strong for him. This is just a journey that all of us have to meet one day. And it is a blessing for Denville Patrick, so Denville Patrick to reach this stage and this age in life. Because many persons, you know, lose their life, you know, unplanned, by accident, by violence, or whatever. But this is done by nature. So we have to be grateful. Rest in peace, Mr. Denville Pachet. Lost in 
All right, for the thumb. Normally, it's all right, but 
really, I did want some colors <laughs> of <laughs> pride. I didn't want to, to appeal, greedy. Really. <laughs> anyway, um, after we ate the tea that they then brought, we went inside the front room. Well, for those of you who are not familiar with it, well, the front room is a special room that West Indian people have. Only special guests and special occasions, they use that room. So we went in and he came in and then he was talking to me, he was telling me, okay, Carl, uh, things to avoid. So he said, listen, don't go out on the road if you don't have to. Nine, I mean, 10, 11 o'clock. Because the men are from the pub. Uh, just come out then and they want to fight you. You don't have to do nothing, don't fight you. So Lynn cut in and said, anybody trouble you, Carl, just come get me. We will deal with them for you. You don't get yourself in a fight because when police come, and you them a lock up first. Even in front of you cars. And Lynn did prove herself. So I'm gonna give you a quick all in two verses. I remember one day I was I went to Aston, another place in England in Aston, and I took them there. And on our way back, a policeman stopped us. And I see, and Lynn said, all the papers are, are intact? I said, yes. And then Lynn jumped over the kind of policeman come out. And then Lynn go to the policeman and started to quarrel with the policeman. I didn't know, but she was doing all kinds of things. And I said, what? what? Lynn is the first I've ever seen a black woman turn red in a car. Lynn turned red. So when Lynn got back in the car, Lynn never said nothing to me until I reached home. And Lynn was really, really furious. So you read about people like Nanny after my rooms, Queen and Zinga, Afangola. But nobody ever read about people like Lynn. And Lynn is a true leader, stance leader, true black woman, there to represent her people. Lynn was the person. Lynn was Denville, 21 centimeters was Lynn. Eldest son, that my mom and dad are like two peas in a pod. Well, to me, they're more than two peas in a pod. They're like Siamese twin in the pod. They're that close. Anything, Lynn and Denville were there. Okay. Denville was telling me that I shouldn't get in a fight or something. He never teach me to you know, teach me to fight. So he took me to this place. Um, it was Eatfield Road, but later known as 104. And I remember then we went there and he said, hey, this is my young brother, and just come from here and I'm going to teach him to fight. <laughs> so the guy looked at me and he said, okay, do 10 um, press up on your knuckles. I went down and I couldn't do one. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I said, let me see your hand. It's a woman and this man. What do you say about me? Anyway, he got to call a guy, the guy named Maxwell, I remember. And he said, Maxwell, take this guy on the way and teach him. And Maxwell taught me to do the press-ups and the various things. Taught me to fight, so to speak. All right, the following week, then they took me to a bookshop. Um, I think the bookshop is called Ari, whatever it was. So the black bookshop, where they sell books and all African history, African leaders, whatever. And then the, one of Denville's motto is every black man on this planet should be able to learn a language which is Swahili Denville like. And they said they should be able to speak wherever you go in the world on this globe and you see an ex black man. He should be able to, to speak or you should be able to communicate whatever language you speak differently. But you should be able to communicate with him in Swahili. So that was one of Denville's belief. Denville also said that who you become in this life is dependent on your childhood upbringing plus what you learn along the way. And you, as you can see, then the Lin taught the children the right way. Then the Lin taught their kids to stand tall on the shoulders and the shoulders of the giants. The Denville and Lin Really, really, as Tony said, he just found out recently how important those lessons were. But he taught them to be real people. Then, the, when I went to the bookshop with them, the, the lady at the bookshop said, Oh, Mr. Patrick, that book you have ordered is arriving. And then they got the book and gave it to me. 
remember the book distinctly? The book was Philosophy and Opinion of Marcus Garvey. So to read that book here, and you know, some of the books that he was introducing to me, books like The Destruction of Black Civilization, another book called Black Skin White Mouth by Frank Fanon, and he was introducing a few other books like what Nereary wrote from um, Tanzania and Huey Nkrumah from Ghana. Denville was an erudite when it comes to black history. If you were to have a conversation with Denville, Denville would, would turn that conversation into an exoteric discussion. Denville was that knowledgeable. He seems quite what I read a man said about Denville the last time that it's silent with a run, but nobody knew what he meant, but I did. Because Denville was, Denville knew his stuff. I'm really, really, I stand here in front of you, really, really proud to have had Denville, a man of his caliber, that I can call my brother. Denville was dear for me. Not just Denville, but Lynn as well. And the family as well. They're all there. I love them all. Anyway, um, I can't I can stand here and talk about Denville for a long time. There's so many things. Don't even know where to start. But, however, I know that Denville would have, if Denville was here, he would have loved to have. Thank you all for coming and thank you for listening to me. Thank you for sharing. And wishing you all a pleasant journey back to your respectful dwellings when our sermon is finished. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. The strength of the Patrick family is obvious. And as Mr. Patrick spoke about the readings that were accessed in the bookstores in England, I could fully appreciate the, the pride in Africa, the pride in being black, the pride in what many West Indians need to understand about our heritage and therefore how we can be strong. And I have a few of those books in my library so I can understand the pride you have in reading them. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great the Lord. Friends, we have been sitting for a long time. I invite you, if you can, to stand up, John, and sing him. O Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder, consider all the words thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, how great the world. Oh Lord, my God, when I am awesome.
pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Be seated. excited to celebrate her 50th birthday. For weeks before her birthday, she had it on her status about a big day was coming because she was excited that she would be able to celebrate her 50th birthday. A few weeks after her celebration and all the excitement, she spoke with me on the phone and told me that she was diagnosed with cancer. <coughs> and I did not hear. So I said, I didn't hear what you said. Could you repeat that for me? You heard me, Paul. I was diagnosed with cancer and I am to undergo treatment. <coughs> Another gentleman went to the doctor, having done an executive profile, and was told that he had very high PSA. You know, if your PSA is above 10, persons become quite anxious. This man's PSA was really over 50. He did an MRI. There were some suspicious lesions on his prostate. He was told after biopsy that both lobes of the prostate have cancerous cells. I could tell you more stories. Of people's lives being upended by some of the harsh realities of life. The lady left her home for just a few minutes just to go to the shop. And then she has some people bawling out. Her two children whom she left at home were now in danger of death because their house was engulfed in flames. The nurse has just left a function. In fact, it was an outreach event on her way to Kingston. And the call to her supervisor was, Nurse Brown is in the hospital. She's unconscious. She was involved in, a, in an accident. Life has a way of throwing some curveballs at us that make us wonder, where can we find peace? Where can we find joy and happiness? And the first thing we sang this morning is that it is well with my soul. When peace like a river tendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, though Satan should buffet, though trial should come, it is well. But when, when can it be well? And what will make it well? Life throws some serious curveballs and upend our experiences and we are distressed. But we are not alone, we are not unique. The writer of Lamentations knew that very well. If you read the book of Lamentations, which is sometimes felt to be the Lamentations of the prophet Jeremiah, though that is sometimes questioned, you will hear the outpouring of someone who was in deep distress I am the man who has seen affliction by the rod of his wrath. He has made my skin and flesh grow old and has broken my bones. Like a bear lying in wait, like a lion in hiding, he dragged me from the path and mangled me and left me without help. He pierced my heart with arrows from his quiver. I became the laughing stock of all the people. He has filled me with bitter herbs and sated me with gall. He has broken my teeth with gravel. He has trampled me in the dust. I have been deprived of peace. 
I have forgotten what prosperity is, so I say my splendor is gone and all that I hope for from the Lord. These are the words of one who is going through or had been going through distress. And these expressions of distress are not unlike our own experiences. And it doesn't matter who we are, it doesn't matter our station in life, it doesn't matter our financial support and wherewithal, it doesn't matter where we live. Life throws some serious curveballs at us and upend our lives in serious ways. But then we can hope, can we not? Then we can be hopeful, then we can anticipate something better, can we not? The writer of Lamentations recognized that there was turmoil on the outside. Everywhere he looked, as a matter of fact, at one point, he said, Lord, look and consider, whom have you ever seen treated like this? Should women need their offspring, the children they have cared for, we're talking about cannibalism. Young and old lie together in the dust of the streets. My young men and maidens have fallen by the sword. There was pain and distress on all sides. Everywhere outside was distress. But I want to suggest, friends, that when we look around, and when we consider all that is happening around us, and when we realize how distressing life can be, it is in the midst of that reality <coughs> that I suggest to you all that there can be hope, there can be peace. Hear the experience of the writer of Lamentations. I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I remember them and my soul is downcast within me. Yet, yet, this I call to mind and therefore I have hope. Something came to his mind. Something came to his memory. He was able to recall something which would make the difference in his life. The Lord's great love and compassion would never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. It is this, my friends, that I suggest as the secret source, as a secret formula, as the secret solution for us to experience peace in the midst of the turmoil and the upheaval and the pain and the distress and the fright that we experience in life. And Mr. Patrick's death has thrown a curveball in the life of his family. But here is where we might find hope. The great love of the Lord, the steadfast love of the Lord, the compassion of the Lord never ceases. But what is this steadfast love that we are talking about? It is the love of God for us despite who we are. It is the love of God for us despite our station in life. It is the love of God for us despite our financial or social standing. I remember some years ago, I was making a presentation to some prison warders as I tried to explain to them who we all are in God's economy, in God's world and I said there is no one better than or worse than you are and the, the prison warders got upset with me 
I have to stop my presentation because they were all grumbling and murmuring and they strongly opposed me and I have to stop for a while because prison warders and prisoners can't be at the same level. And I repeated my statement, in God's economy, no one is better than or worse than your father. Because you see friends, despite who we are, here is one thing that is true. God loves us all. He has made us all. So we pray, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. We do not therefore enjoy any status above anybody else. And that is because of the great love that God has for us. That is the nature of God's steadfast love. He doesn't single us out and say, you are better than, or you go over here, no, I can't bother with you now. God's steadfast love is good for us all. And when we remember that, when we consider that, when we bear that in mind, we have the formula for hope and peace. Because we can say, despite the grief I am going through, despite the distress that I am feeling, despite the sadness that has now ripped through my family, despite the pain in my body and the fear in my heart, the greatness and the faithfulness of the Lord are new every morning. Amen. Fresh, a fresh supply. Every morning, God's new faithfulness or the, every morning there's a new expression of God's faithfulness. It never grows still. God starts over daily to show us how much he cares for us. And therefore, says, the, says the, the Lamentations, I will wait for him. Therefore, I will wait for him. You know, if you notice a number of drivers on the Jamaican roads, patience is not one of their strongest points. Yeah? And if you notice some persons in a line, patience is not their strength. And if you stop at the stoplight, the car that is about six paces behind you sometimes can see better than you can at the front. Because when the other side gets amber <laughs> and you're still on red, they're honking your horn for the, the horn because we are in this hurry. Yes, we want things to happen fast. And we go to the line and there are 10 people and we say, no, sir. We're not staying here because we want things fast. The, the, the prayer says, I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. You, the, the, the compassions of the Lord never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. I will wait for him. So when we consider all that is happening around us, the question is, what is the nature of the private talk we have up to ourselves? What is the nature of that inner conversation that we have with ourselves? Because friends, what I'm suggesting is that the inner conversation that we have is that which will make the difference in our lives. The way we motivate ourselves, the way we reflect on where we are, the inner resource on which we draw is that which will make the difference. Hear what it says, the Lord is my portion. In other words, my inheritance, my future, my hope is the Lord. When we talk about the portion, we're talking about the special provision that is there for those who love the Lord. The, 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 the writer says, the Lord is my portion. 
In other words, he has secured this for me. Despite all that is happening around me, this is what the Lord has secured for me, and therefore I can wait patiently. My brothers and sisters, when death comes as it has come for the Patrick's family, it rips and no more things are under our feet. The ground on which we stand seems to be shaking and it seems to be very unsure. But I suggest to you, talk to yourself. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. The Lord is my portion. A painter was asked to paint something that depicted peace and serenity. That was a task he was given. Do a drawing that depicts peace and serenity. And so he drew a scene of an angry wave, of the angry waves on the sea, turbulence. The waves were beating hard against the shore. Tall waves were crashing against the shore. But somewhere in the cavern of a rock was a bird sitting on the egg in its nest. Undisturbed, unperturbed by the turbulence. Why? Because it was safe in the rock. Jesus is my rock. Yes? If we can say to ourselves, Jesus is the rock on which I stand. Jesus is the rock on which I stand and therefore, when all around is sinking. And so we sing the hymn, On Christ's solid rock I stand, all the ground is sinking sand. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. The Lord is my portion. And if we can affirm that the Lord is our portion, then in, in the midst of the greatest turbulence of life, we can hope, we can wait, we can have confidence. And what, the, what, does, what, what does the next verse say? The Lord is good to those who hope or whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. To the Patrick's family, to the Patrick's relatives and friends, to the neighbors, to the relatives, to all of us. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in Him. Place your hope in Him and you will find strength in the turbulence of life. May God bless you. Bless your word, Lord, in Jesus' name. I'm going to ask the relatives of Mr. Patrick to remain seated and I'm going to invite the rest of us to stand as we pray for the family of Mr. Patrick. Family members remain seated, <coughs> friends and loved ones please stand. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Father, we present to you Mrs. Patrick, the children, the grandchildren, and the great grandchildren of Mr. Dick. We present to you, Lord, the other relatives 
who at this time would read the class in the midst of them. Father in heaven, you understand their grief, you see their tears, you understand their pain, you understand their sorrow. We pray, Lord, that you will comfort them at this time. We ask you, Lord, to help them to find you, to make you their portion, to make you the rock on which they lean, to make you the one who stands by them and that they are conscious of your presence with them. Remind them, Lord, that death and frightening stories and realities and devastation do not mean that you are gone from them. Indeed, remind us all, Lord, that nothing in life or death can separate us from your love. So, Lord, we assure them that with the passing of their dear loved one, you still stand by them because death is but one of the experiences that we are going to have in this life. In the sorrowful hours and weeks and months that will follow Father, grant that they will provide comfort to one another even as they rely on you for their ultimate comfort and hope. And grant us all your peace. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Shaquille, Luke, who are grandsons. Marvin, who is a cousin. Noel Sams, who is a son-in-law. And Frank Lewin, who is an adopted son. To be ready for your role as Paul Bearers. When we come to the singing of the second stanza, when my way grows drear, then we'll get in position and the undertaker will help us to turn the casket and we'll move to the hearse as we sing the other verse. So let us stand as we sing, Precious Lord, take my hand.
Come on. Dad. Come on. Come on. All right. You ready? Turn, turn, yeah. Turn, yeah, man. Watch your foot there. Don't go long enough. Come, don't go down. Come, don't go down. Come, 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 Trisha, Carolyn? Yeah. Carolyn? Okay. Zara? Oh, just gone to the car. She's coming. Lamar? Akeem? 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 Just gone to the car. Okay, Luke? Luke. Luke? Jade? Okay, could have made it. Could have made it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Kenya? Kenya could have made it. For Mari? For Mari could have made it. Naomi? I could have made it. What about Frankie? Frankie could have made it. What about Sunny? Sunny. 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 All right. So so right. I call him what his name is? Yes, you yes. are. Yes. Yes. And depending on the piece. Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have your attention, please? Jesus said, Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, for I go to prepare a place for you. We know that if the earthen house of our tabernacle be dissolved, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He that believe in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. O death, where is thy victory? O death, where is thy sting? Thanks be to God who gives us the victory to our Lord Jesus Christ. For as much as does please Almighty God to take on to himself the soul of our brother, then Bill Mark Patrick, here departed, who therefore commit his body to the ground, dust to dust, ashes to ashes, and earth to earth, ensure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life of all believers through our Lord Jesus Christ who shall change our earthly body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the mighty working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me from henceforth, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. Even so said the Spirit, for they rest from their labors and their works all of them. for those whom we love but see no longer. 
grant them your peace. Let life perpetual shine upon them. And in your loving wisdom and almighty power, working us the good purpose of your perfect will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, Father of all mercy, and give of all comfort. Deal graciously, we pray, with those who mourn. That casting every care upon you, they may know the consolation of your love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, support us all the day long of this troublous life. Until the shadows lend here and the evening comes. When the busy world is washed, the evil of life over and our work done. Then, O oh Lord, in your mercy, grant us and those we love safe lodging, holy rest, and peace of the last. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray. Friends, I need your help. Let us sing as men work. As the women, as the, as the lady works. Sometimes morning when this life is born, I'll fly away. Some glad morning when this life is born, I'll fly away. God's celestial shore, I'll fly away. Oh, 
the linger ever near me. And the sacred past on Some sweet day I'm going away I'm gonna leave this world No more to roam Some sweet day When life is over Some sweet day Some sweet day I'm going away Some sweet day Some sweet days, I'm going away. I'm gonna leave this world, no more to roam. Some sweet days, when life is over. Some sweet days, some sweet days, I'm going away.
we will understand it better by and by. Oh, by and by, when the morning comes, when all the saints have got all gathered home, we will tell the story how we overcome. We will understand it better by and by. By and by, when the morning comes, when all the saints have got all gathered home, we will tell the story how we overcome. We will understand it better by and by. By the river because the sun is hot. <laughs> by the river. Someday, I'll meet you by the river. Not far away. For when my Lord shall call me home, I'll be happy home beyond the sun. Meet me by the river. Someday, I'll meet you by the river. Someday, I'm meeting by the river, not far away. For when my Lord shall call me home, happy, happy home beyond the sky. Meet me by the river. Someday, someday, meet me by the river. In the sky, sorrow will be over, joy will come at last. Better days are coming by and by. Better days are coming by and by. When we reach the city, in the sky, sorrow will be over, joy will come at last. Better days are coming, by and by, better days are coming, by and by, when we reach the city. Keep us in everlasting fellowship of the church triumphant. That we may rejoice together.